The Air Force gave me the opportunity to fly, and, and I just continued it on into uh, civilian life when I retired. Well, actually, about seven years ago, I fell out of a tree over Newman, and uh, uh, I thought it was just a broken leg, but uh, it turned out to be a little more complicated than that. They brought in uh, a uh, specialist, and after a few days, he uh, came to the conclusion that uh, I had multiple myeloma. His treatment of multiple myeloma was uh, uh, chemotherapy. Uh, we use a number of, uh, of different chemicals to treat the myeloma. FAA found out that I was taking thalidomide, and thalidomide is a no-no if you fly. I think anybody that flies experiences this. Uh, once you break away from the ground, you're closer to God. Well, at that point, I elected to uh, discontinue the, the chemo. Uh, Dr. Sheba said that uh, if you don't take the chemo, you'll die. You know, you got about 24 months because you're stage three, which is serious stuff. Having a friend who went through uh, the stem cell process and to see him almost dying, and I worked with him on different events and things in this respect, and to see him just about, you know, he is not going to be around for another month or anything. And uh, I said, well, if 24 is all I got, that, that's the way we're going to go because we're not going to take any more thalidomide. And then he had the stem cell uh, process, and, and you see gradually, looking terrible, then looking better and looking better. And, and then all of a sudden, the hair's back, and he's, he's ready to fly his plane again, and he's alive. Uh, and, and that, just thinking about how that works, and for the opportunity to, to see someone turn a life around and, and exist again. That, that got me very excited. The reason that I went with a, with a stem cell transplant was because he indicated that after we did it, no medication would be required. And it's been that way six years now. I just had a, a physical and passed it. And my airplane just had a physical and passed it last week. So <laughs> we're good. <laughs> We're good for a few miles. <laughs> and that's why I'm so enthusiastic about this stem cell research that we're doing here in Merced, because you know what they're contemplating here is miles ahead of what we did in San Francisco with the adult stem cells. The stem cell program saved my life. There, there's no question about that, because uh, you know, 50 years ago, if I had come down with a case of myeloma, which is supposedly a, a serious malady, uh, probably wouldn't have made it. The potential of stem cells is that they can turn into a variety of different cell types that then can be used to um, repair or potentially replace damaged tissue. The genes that gets turned on within the stem cell are the instructions. So those genes are guiding that stem cell into becoming one cell, like a muscle cell, or guiding that cell to become a blood cell. But it, it's all coming from the same stem cell, from the same blank cell. There are two main types of stem cells. There are the embryonic stem cells, which are able to generate the cells of every kind of cell in the body, from neurons to muscle to blood. And then there's adult stem cells. Each tissue has a group of stem cells within that is able to generate cells to regenerate that tissue when the tissue gets damaged. There's many different diseases that have the potential to be um, understood and cured by stem cells. For example, if we can understand how to generate muscle stem cells called satellite cells, we are be able then to use the satellite cells generated in the lab and help them go forward in their differentiation so we can treat muscular dystrophy. We can um, potentially save a lot of lives. So the Stem Cell Instrumentation Foundry is a really unique research facility. Um, it basically allows for the uh, fabrication of um, what we're calling lab on a chip, which basically was designed by um, engineers and bioengineers 
to create um, specialized microenvironments. Which basically means the complete miniaturization of the experimental setup from the petri dish, which uses, which is large and uses a lot of cells, to a microchip, which uses a thousands of the volume that you will need, and also a much smaller number of cells. So actually, when we when we want to replace tissue, we need a lot of cells. We actually need a lot of cells, but the studies um, are expensive. We use a lot of reagents. Um, stem cells are rare, and so we don't even have a lot of stem cells to work with lots of times. So the advantage of the stem cell foundry and taking these down to the micro scale is that we can do these things on a single cell level, as opposed to whole populations of cells, which then um, can, can get into more complex, kind of heterogeneous types of environments. The preliminary studies where we were just um, when I was working with the bioengineers to test the chips and to just have a prototype design, we used uh, neutrophils, which is one type of white blood cell. And what you find is that the majority of cells in the microenvironment we designed would migrate in one direction, but there were a few stray cells that would migrate in the other direction. That's really important if you're thinking about stem cells because one of the requirements for a stem cell to do its job is that it needs to migrate to the right location in the body. Uh, since, we're, since the uh, lab on a chip, we can connect that technology into a microscope. We can follow the cells a long time as we're doing the experiment, which is something that in a normal traditional experiment the British we cannot do because we will lose where the cells would be. And so if we know how to trick those stray stem cells or those rogue stem cells from going away from the right place or homing to the right place in the body and making them go in the correct direction with the rest, then, then that could help improve the use for stem cells in, in therapy. In that way, we can do the experiments that before we couldn't do because we require a very large number of cells, which required a large sample. And will increase the cost of the reagents to now uh, much smaller settings that can and that would allow us to do the experiments with on pennies on the dollar with a much limited and smaller number of cells. And so in the stem cell instrumentation foundry, um, biologists like myself will be able to consult with um, engineers and basically focus on one particular biological question. And this will lead to the engineers designing a chip doing what they need to do, understanding flow rates and all of these miniaturization of, um, of these microenvironments on this um, new technology. This kind of technology that now we're going to have at the Stendhal Foundry is not available everywhere. We are, it has been used in engineering to study different things, but we are having it directly applied to stem cell biology, which is fairly new. But we can't really get that. In that detailed information using conventional technology. And so that's why I think that this, the technology that can be produced in the SCIF has so much um, potential impact on the field. I don't even pretend to understand it. Uh, uh, I'm impressed by the staff. I mean, we got PhDs that don't look like they're old enough to vote. and. Uh, and, and when you talk to them, uh, you're astounded by the knowledge that they have. We have recruited um, faculty that are top people in their field and brought them together under the idea that we want to study stem cells. Each of these faculty are tackling the stem cell questions from very different perspectives. The whole campus here is that way and, and I think when they pick the professors they, they look at that. Does a professor have the idea of collaborating and carrying their, their research out into the community and into society and businesses? We both became interested when we did have a tour of UC Merced and we did meet with a researcher who was studying stem cells on fruit flies and we had no idea that fruit flies would have a stem cell but uh, it was just fascinating to think that this world-class research was, you know, happening right here in UC Merced. Economically, this is a depressed area, and so we have to look to areas where we can improve and, and develop new uh, economic uh, opportunities. Right now, with the way that the economy is, 
attaining federal funded dollars to do research is very hard. And uh, it has been a blessing that we have had at UC Merced to be able to have the grant from CERM as well as people of the community who are believing in our potential to, our potential to bring forward the research and stem cells for their benefit. We are very supportive of the UC, all, all of the departments, all of the schools, all of the colleges, and, and it just seemed that the stem cell research lab um, could use a little extra boost or needed a little extra um, energy, and it is an area where Dave and I are just so interested in, and, and I do agree with Dave, regenerative medicine is the wave of the future, and, and I feel like we're so close, and that maybe in our lifetime we'll see you know, wonderful changes come from the lab and UC Merced, so we're very supportive. Without that kind of research, we're not doing what we can possibly do with, what, you know, with, with science. We need to be able to use all of our knowledge and truly improve the lives of many, many people. The, uh, the stem cell research that we're doing uh, is right. The, uh, it has to be because it's designed to uh, cure people of maladies that uh, simply weren't curable in the past. We have a nephew that has a eight-year-old son that just was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes and his body's not making insulin anymore. And being eight years old, he's got probably 80 years for medicine and stem cell research to catch up to him and maybe solve his problem and, and, and be able to, to uh, make his body produce insulin again. So those, those things are really important. His quality of life would definitely be improved if he, if he could get his body making it, uh, insulin again. So we um, hope that happens. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I love my wife. I love my dog and I love my airplane and uh, uh, they kind of like my make my life complete and uh, for that for that I've got the stem cell uh, program to be grateful for grateful to you know.